What's up guys, I'm the East Coaster fan. When most enthusiasts talk about roller coasters, they mention the statistics and where it places on their rankings. Trust me, I do that too. But one of the things that I feel like is neglected is what makes roller coasters scary. Now I know, as enthusiasts, nothing really scares us, we'll ride anything. But for the GP, it is an important consideration. Coaster manufacturers have the difficult job of both balancing fear and rideability. If you play Planet Coaster, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So today I want to look at the coasters that are operating today and kind of relate them to many different phobias that exist. Now this is going to be a lot to go through, so sit back and enjoy. To be honest, most coasters fall within this category, but you definitely want to avoid the tallest in your park, whether that's a Hyper, a Giga, a Strata, or a Kitty Coaster, if that's the tallest. This one definitely applies to all the launch coasters out there, especially those that have a high acceleration, like the hydraulic and the compressed air. Also, avoid Formula Rosa at all costs. Now I want to include a phobia about going upside down, but I couldn't find a real name online. If there is a real name, please put it in the comments below. I'm pretty interested to know. But for the sake of this video, let's just call it Inversiophobia, the fear of going upside down. Now I think you'd have to look at the record breakers, so Steel Curtain at Kennywood, Colossus at Thorpe Park, and of course the Smiler. But it's not just about the number of times you go upside down, it's just going upside down in general. Luckily, I haven't seen any cases of someone being stuck upside down. Until today. Now this definitely applies more to airplanes, but if you want to take it literally, avoid the flying coasters. That'll make you feel like you're flying like Superman. These are the coasters that are designed with really tight restraints, whether that's intentional, like the Zamperla flying coasters, or not. Also, I feel like the indoor coasters fall into this category too because you're trapped inside a building. This is the opposite of claustrophobia, basically, and the B&M Hyper Coasters definitely have this aspect. You're going down these big drops with only a clamshell restraint. Now luckily insects aren't really a part of roller coasters that often, but Revenge of the Mummy still has a lot of them. Luckily for you, it seems that most coasters don't operate during the rain. However, Kentucky Kingdom has almost all their coasters named after storms, so if you don't like them, I'd say avoid that park at all costs. Also, I'd say Lightning Racer is another one you'd want to avoid. This one definitely applies to the spinning coasters out there, especially the ones that are free spinning. Clowns aren't really a part of roller coasters that often, except for really two big examples. Clown Coaster at Coney Island, which is a kiddie coaster, and Laugh Track, especially when you're going backwards, that's a little freaky. And I guess you can count all the Joker clones as well. Really? A fear of water? I thought the only person who had that was Finn from Adventure Time. Anyway, you definitely want to keep away from the roller coasters that get you soaked, like Divertical and all the Mac Power Splashes. Wicker Man is definitely a big category of this next one. I mean, the whole structure is on fire. Unfortunately for you, it seems like a lot of roller coasters are themed to cars. I mean, West Coast Racers, Verbolton, and even the previously mentioned Top Throw Dragster. Uh, come on, there's got to be a coaster that's themed to a book somewhere. Uh, uh, Arthur! Arthur at Europa Park! Haha! -ha. Well, luckily for you, there's a model called the Stand-Up Coaster. I hear there's one at Six Flags Great Adventure called Green Lantern. 
You could go ride that while I ride El Toro. I don't blame you, riding some of those older coasters can hurt sometimes, especially those arrow loopers. This definitely applies to the coasters that have audio in them, like rock and roll. Wait, what? I can't hear you. Now this is similar to the indoor coasters, but this is where it's fully in the dark, so coasters like Space Mountain or Skull Mountain. I'd say this one falls into two categories. If you want to be alone in a row, you can ride Space Mountain at Disney World or some of those RMC Raptors. However, if you want the true alone experience, I'd recommend hitting up some of the mountain coasters. You're in those woods all by yourself. I guess this isn't common in the New York area, but you definitely want to stay away from coasters like the Matterhorn at Disneyland and Polar Explorer at Legoland Belund. Well, you're in luck. There's a new coaster opening at Great Adventure in 2020, I mean 2021. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of took me a long time to figure out a symmetric roller coaster, but then I found RC Racer, aka the coaster that math teachers love. I would definitely put boomerangs in this category. I mean, there's a loop where the station is, but I don't blame you for being afraid of this one. Hey, you're in luck. There's a coaster at Alton Towers called 13. Luckily, there's not a lot of plants on roller coasters. To be honest, that kind of hurt getting hit by a branch every time. But there is a lot of plants the parks put outside roller coasters. Like in the case of King Ka, they put the plants right in front of the launch. Great move, Six Flags. Well, I have good news for you. If you want to ride Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, you have to go past a huge clock in order to enter the line. I see, horses can sometimes be intimidating to ride, but trust me, both Pony Express and Steeplechase aren't that scary. God, some of these phobias are getting very random. Let's see what's next. How the hell are you supposed to say that word? And the winner for the most unnecessarily long roller coaster name goes to Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Wow. Now, not a lot of coasters dive underground into holes, but Oblivion has probably one of the biggest ones in the world, so I'd stay away from that. Well, unfortunately for you, it seems a lot of parks like to theme roller coasters based on monsters, such as uh, Monster at Adventureland, The Beast at King's Island, and Son of Beast. Also at King's Island. Well, it was. Alright, we're on our last phobia. Let's see what it can be. Oh. Way to be creative. I guess there's only one coaster that fits into this. Yup, the king of phobia coasters, Phobia Fear at Lake Compounds, aka the second best coaster in the park. Well, I hope you enjoyed going through this long list of phobias with me, plus the one I created. If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a like. If you really liked it, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.